Body. The Mind's Spaceship. Introduction. We are a creation of all three, mind, body, and spirit. In Mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes, we discuss how projections of mind from all realms cause the pacing actions of our bodies. This includes physical particles, as well as waves of sound and light that exist within our dimension. Body, the mind's spaceship, discusses the physical realm in relationship to the greater vortex of time. It is all spirit, and all spirits have a relative body. We see that our bodies are the crunching and stretching of the louche, all relative to your current position. As we shrink down, so do the relative flows of the fluid. Body will only and always be body to you and to any being that embodies the same relative frame of motion. This includes the gravitational accelerations and velocities you're currently undergoing. Those qualities determine your dimension of experience. It is a relative scenario, and here is where the etheric or quantum realms and physical reality become one. It is through the scaled wave nature of the now that we see all bodies are relative in their existence and that all bodies exist simultaneously in the greater now. Body is more than the human body, as it includes physical objects that you identify with and connect to. This could include your car, your home, money, and societal structures. We, the human race of planet Earth, all share the same body. Although our individual identities and duties fractal inward, which create the feeling of individuality and also that of separation, we all share the same body, as in dimension or flow of space-time. Our collective body reaches to the edge of the smooth cosmic microwave background and to the edges of black holes at every galactic center. It is the limits of our f physical experience and electromagnetic relationships. In short, our body is our dimension. Body then consciousness or vice versa? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The same question could be asked for a conscious experience within time. Which came first, the conscious fields or the body? I would argue the conscious fields. Let me ask you this. Which came first? Matter, sound, and light, or the human body? Science suggests that evolution began with simple amino acids coming together to make it simple single-celled organisms. These are all byproducts of the flows of space that already existed within time before the evolved body was ever conceived. From this, it seems obvious that first came the conscious fields, and then beings of many types have sprung from that. Each being is tuned to various bits of the greater body. The tunings of various beings give us great insight into the reality of the primal conscious field, as evolutionary senses are all secondary byproducts to the already existing flows of space-time within the louche. The Senses From our bodies we become aware of the fields of influence that may be experienced by others. We know of light because we have evolved to detect light. The same is true with sound. From our naturally evolved tools, that of eyes and ears, we presume other beings with eyes and ears are undergoing an experience of some sort that relates to those vibrations. That is the limitation of science, as it primarily focuses on aspects of creation which we have evolved to detect. Why is it that we ignore the conscious harmonics of delta through fast gamma? Wouldn't these tunings also give us a greater insight into reality? In relationship to electromagnetism, we understand that by examining our eyes and experience, we are limited to the visible spectrum. We define the spectrum as visible. In relationship to acoustic waves, we make the same judgments. Humans have an auditory spectrum. We understand the spectrum of surface roughness by categorizing something as smooth or soft. We understand the stiffness spectrum by saying that some objects are hard while some are soft. All these characteristics exist within many spectrum, all a secondary aspect of conscious fields that existed before we began to evolve. Time Atom shows us the conscious spectrum in relationship to the fifth dimensional vortex of creation. We see that the perceivable conscious fields of human perception are similar to those of acoustic and electromagnetic, as in, we can only see or interact with a tiny sliver of information when considering all of those that exist from infinitely small to infinitely large. Our human experience of awakened perception exists within delta to fast gamma. This is six harmonics of experience. Of those six, three of them are tuned to the physical realm. 
Delta and theta waves are tuned to the pre-manifest realms of the lower verse, and fast gamma may be tuned to the denser realms of the noviverse. These tunings do not apply to our waking state of reality and may be byproducts of the etheric or quantum realms of subspace, just like all aspects of sensory evolution. However, they are still tuned to orbits of creation. We only perceive the body of our dimension when in an alpha, beta, or slow gamma state of brain harmony or conscious awareness. Sound. The frequencies of sound a being may experience is directly related to the vocal cords of that being, its ear size and shape, and the environment. The human body is roughly tuned to frequencies of 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. Vibrations lower than 20 Hz are known as infrasound, and vibrations greater than 20,000 Hz are known as ultrasounds. It is a simple categorization of acoustic waves that have been defined by humans through science. Sound waves are longitudinal, which means there is a compression and expansion of the fluid in the direction of travel as it propagates through body. With the sound waves, there is an actual compression and expansion of the matter that creates the vibration, or rather allows the vibration to permeate. It is somewhat the difference between a compressed state and an expanded state of the raw fluid of experience. It may be the difference between the past and the future states as the strength and frequency may depend upon the position within the crystal of time. We will return to this. Light. The frequencies of light a being is tuned to highly relate to the type of star that the planet orbits. For example, our solar system stems from a yellow star, the sun, and therefore yellow becomes the center of our vision. The visible spectrum is then defined existing from blue to red, while being centered around the color yellow. Beings that evolved around a blue star would most likely be tuned to blue light, and beings that evolved around a red star would be tuned to red light. The color of the star is determined by the exterior temperature of the star. Some stars or bodies are not hot enough to even glow in the visible spectrum. It may be reasonable to assume that beings that evolved around an infrared body would have their center of electromagnetic awareness around the infrared spectrum. Beings that evolved near an extremely hot body may be tuned to energies greater than blue. Light waves are transverse, which means that there is a vibration creates a perpendicular force to the direction of motion. This is why it's called the electromagnetic spectrum. With every push is a pole, and with every pole is a push. Light and magnetism move as one in this regard, as they vibrate the etheric or quantum fields like stones being tossed into a pond. Both sound and light are secondary features of the greater orbits within time. Consciousness Our human perspective is only aware of certain frequencies within the greater orbits of conscious experience. Similar to sound and light, the conscious fields we are tuned to are a result of our position within a greater orbit. From orbiting the Earth, we get the senses of feel, taste, smell, and sound. From orbiting the Sun, we get the sense of vision. From our greatest inertial reference frame arises our perceptions of time and conscious awareness. Again, secondary in construction to the greater flows of the Louche, our conscious harmonics are a direct result of a frequency or wave of some type. All frequencies are created by a pendulating or rotating aspect of mind, body, or spirit. Consciousness is primary, and all other aspects of experience are secondary. The primary conscious field could be considered the greatest vortex of all moments. From there, all other aspects arise. First comes conscious fields, then matter, light, and sound from there. The Vortex of Consciousness from the crystal of time, we see that there exist orbits within the louche that relate to acceleration towards center at light speed. Each orbital diameter, starting from infinitely large, fractal inward to be one-fourth the diameter of the wave that is bigger. This fractal pattern continues inward to infinity and shows that our human bodies are tuned to a thin slice of conscious experience. The Infinite Body of Rotation Earth orbits the sun. The sun orbits the galactic center. All those structures orbit the greatest center of all moments. To go another step inward, the primal particles orbit their center, DNA of the body orbits its center, and so on. 
When you start from infinitely small and increase the orbits to infinitely large, you see that all orbits or flows of space act as habitats, all overlapping and existing simultaneously. They are all tidally locked and synchronized to create a smooth and fluid experience. Postures of mind and body create distortions as the primal energy of spirit flows inward. By extrapolating all orbits of motion to infinity, you see that our physical bodies are a creation of less dense realms and more dense realms, all overlapping to create our waking experience. This orbit of infinity is what gives us a fifth dimension to process. It is the ultimate result of tidally locked fluid orbiting within each other to the greatest orbit of all moments. This gives us the greatest orbits within time and shows that all perceived, sound, light, and matter exist within our current inertial reference frame, or dimension of experience. Let's work backward from the greatest orbits of experience. Let's assume consciousness is primary and see how sound, light, and matter may emerge from a single motion through a single fluid. An orbit within time. Einstein's theory of relativity shows us that the perceived matter and light we experience are the result of our inertial reference frame. From this, we see how we have our dimension of experience. The universe isn't really expanding, but rather our perceptions of a singular fluid are being stretched and crunched based on our position within the crystal of time. Perception of the mind is different than using a tool to detect. Tools are created from bits of matter within our dimension, and therefore do not have the ability to demonstrate or interact with other orbits within time. Matter will always be matter within our dimension, and all relative relationships are somewhat fixed in that regard. Conscious fields of awareness are guided by our gyroscopic orbit, while matter is the crunching of the fluid within our perception. The matter is illusionary in that nature. However, within our perception, it clearly has effect. Matter within the vortex. What came first, matter, light, or sound? After conscious fields are formed, it seems that within our perception, matter would exist before light, or perhaps the two arose simultaneously with sounds to follow. The same fluid of experience may be crunched and stretched in several ways. We only perceive the flows of this fluid when they exist within our dimension of perception. Each glance or show of the matter comes from a singular orbit while perceptions orbit through the vortex. Why is dark matter approximately four-fifths of the gravitational effects of a galaxy and matter only that of one-fifth? Consider a singular rotation within fluid. As the fluid orbits through, it would be harmonizing properly with our flow at two distinct parts of an orbit. This would be at an ejection point and also at a reinsertion point within our dimension which relates directly to the flows of space we perceive. We cannot interact physically with matter or light existing in flows of space that are greater than the speed of light outward, and one time the speed of light inwards. However, the energy continues to orbit through, creating effects of synchronization while existing within those less dense and more dense realms. In essence, you could say the effects of dark matter come from the energy of creation existing within the lowerverse and noviverse realms. Therefore, you can see how the same fluid of experience may be seen in our future in the form of matter on Earth and then return to us as light in the shape of distant galaxies. It is always one half past and one half future, both overlapping to create a now moment as our 4D experience of X, Y, Z, and T orbits the center of all time. In the previous image, you could say that we are orbiting to the left. As we orbit, the relative motions in relationship to the raw fluid of experience would be stretching and crunching our perceptions into existence. The overlapping of one half past and one half future are in constant vibration as projections of mind synchronize to create our fluid motions. In the future, you would see energy between you and the center of time being crunched while energy that is further would be stretched. In the past, you would see everything reverting back to normal as our perception of the fluid passes through. The same fluid will either be perceived as matter in the future, then light in the past, or as light in the future and then matter in the past, as the energy warps through perceptions, interacting two times in two different ways per conscious snapshot. As we fractal inward to be as infinitely close to the now, you will see it is always an overlapping of one half past and one half future. Matter, light, and sound are a result. 
light within the vortex. Was it matter that came first, or was it light? From this model, you can see that they sprung up simultaneously as the conscious field is awakened at the moment the raw energy of creation hits a flow of space-time equal to the speed of light. This is what implies our entire dimension exists within a relative layer of a black hole. Although the energy of our synchronization continues to orbit outside our perception, it is only perceivable two times per orbit, once as matter and once as light. Matter from below returns as light from above, while light from below returns as matter from above. Sound within the vortex. Matter and light may be seen as moving in the direction of less dense to more dense realms, while sound would be more related to the perceived compression or expansion of any body as we orbit tangentially. The difference in size, again, is related to the overlapping of one half past and one half future. Time dilations exist as we perceive the matter we orbit with. This means that matter in the future is actually in a more compressed state than matter that is in the past. The difference between the two states is a relationship to the tangential velocity and radiant change of the energy creating it. Less dense objects would be manifesting at less dense realms, which have a faster tangential velocity than objects that are closer to center, but slower change in degrees about the center. This means that the, the effect of the Lorentz contraction between past and future would be greater. However, considering we are perceiving a manifesting now, the orbital rate of may be of more importance of this effect. Therefore, denser realms of creation experience more of a difference between angles from 0 to 360 degrees within the orbit and would vibrate sounds accordingly. A 2 Hz orbit has twice the change in angle than a 1 Hz orbit, so the relative size changes appropriately. Sound would then be related to the tangential velocity in combination with the orbital rate of the fluid creating it. It is the difference in relative size created by the perceiving of a singular fluid within time, one half past and one half future.